Hello and welcome back to Worlds of War Studios Presents 5 and 15, where we show you 5 rounds of Warhammer 40k in just 15 minutes. Let's beat this week's players and see what they're feeling today. Hi, I'm Steven Thomas here, playing Astra Militarum, here to put down this cult insurrection using overwhelming firepower. And I'm Adam Johnson, playing Gene Steeler Cult, ready to crack these tanks open and summon our Star Gods. Today's mission is Overrun. In Overrun, each player will deploy within 10 inches of the long table edge with a 24 inch no man zone in the center. There are six objectives, one in each player's deployment zone and four in the no man's land in the center of the battlefield. The primary objective for today's mission is Domination, more commonly known as Hold 2, Hold 3, Hold More. And for our secondary objective, we have Overrun, allowing a player to score either 2, 3, or 5 victory points during their command phase if they hold 1, 2, or 3 of the objectives in their opponent's half of the board. For their secondary objective, Steven has chosen to take Bring It Down, Grind Them Down, and Raise the Banners High. Adam has chosen similar objectives, Grind Them Down, Engage in All Fronts, and Raise the Banners High. Steven won the roll off for first turn, so we're going to start with his first turn. Let's see how the game goes today. So, going into turn one, my main concern here is to make sure that my army isn't in a position to be mass charged on the first turn, and to also uh, have the best firing I can uh, when his units are revealed after I'm done moving, which makes it very difficult, especially on this GW terrain. I believe that it kind of gives Gene Steeler Colts a slight edge uh, with their ability to um, pick where their units are deployed. Yeah, guys, for this, our, our second match uh, playing on the Games Workshop Open terrain setups. We're using the other terrain setup of the two that we're using. If you're not familiar with Gene Steeler Call, uh, something that happens with Gene Steeler Call is uh, if Gene Steeler Call goes second, they actually don't really deploy any of their units until after their opponent has done all of their movement. So as you can see there, I'm setting up out of those blips that are on the battlefield. And one interesting thing is the first unit from a blip can actually uh, come out of that blip anywhere within an inch of it, and that allows the unit to be outside of your deployment zone. So it's a pretty big thing uh, for the Gene Stealer call units to be able to get that advantage. Uh, Steven hung way back because I can get like a 28 inch charge, something like that off of my first turn. I made some mistakes as far as where I came out and still gave Steven some stuff he can shoot at. Usually I'm able to keep my opponent from really firing on anything. Yeah, as you can see, I'm going to hammer some stuff kind of hard with my manticores and then pick at some stuff with my demolisher tanks. And then my infantry units are just mainly going to throw up uh, banners on my objectives. I'm playing here to... I'm playing keep away here pretty much on my first turn. Yeah, if you look on the screen, you can see the blue arrows, uh, something we're adding new for the channel. Those will indicate where shooting is going from and to, so you can a little bit better follow the action. And Steven is really just hammering away with those manticores, with those battle cannons. It's kind of rough. Yeah, my dice were rolling pretty hot in this first turn, but there was some stuff that um, I was looking out for. I'm trying to knock as many of the ridge runners off the table as possible. I'm trying to pick at some smaller units, but uh, a lot of this is my fire has been restricted heavily on this first turn uh, due to all the obscuring terrain and the way that the obscuring terrain works with the Games Workshop uh, setup. I really think the Games Workshop open setup, I think this setup is actually very fair for a lot of armies. You can see Steven still got a lot of clear firing lanes. He cleared off a fuck ton of my stuff in this first turn. It was brutal, even with everything I denied him for shooting. Right. I was still able to engage some key units. I knocked one of those Ridge Runner units down to one and I took one out of another one over there on the left. Right, now you can see a big tactic I can use with Gene Sealer Cults is, though I've got a 10-man squad coming out of a vehicle there, and then they can advance. So on my first movement phase, I have a unit of boys that far up the battlefield. They only have a four-inch charge that they have to make on that unit of guardsmen. Hopefully, what I'm really hoping here is I can get a good, pi a good charge uh, distance, and then I can pile in and maybe bad touch three vehicles with that. That would be optimal. Uh, 
if it happens, but my dice are betraying me this whole first round. It really became pretty brutal. I'm moving my Ridge Runners up. For those of you who aren't aware of them, Ridge Runners basically get a D3 LAS cannon shots each, which is really brutal usually on vehicles. I know Steven's usually afraid of them. Very afraid. They usually do lots of damage. Yeah, but I'm doing shooting here. Uh, you know, I should have at least two tanks killed dead to right, and with how bad my dice rolls were going for the shooting, um, you know, this first volley, that's like six glass cannon shots, and I just basically scratched the paint off of the, off of the tank. Yeah, so here I'm just hoping that all of my tanks don't get piled into, uh, so there's not much I can do. He's moved this unit of uh, guys right up here and he's going to basically wipe out my infantry unit and charge into one of my tank commanders so I'm either going to have to leave him in melee or pull him out to actually shoot the unit that charged him. Yeah the biggest weakness I think that IG has especially in a tank heavy list is not being able to fall back and shoot out of combat although it also kind of hurts them with their battle cannons at least all the battle cannons worth taking are actually blast weapons so they can't fire on the unit that's piled into them. Yeah, that does hinder us, but Demolisher Cannons do hit hard when they get to shoot. And as you'll see later in this, I do use them to great effect. Yeah, it, it, it was painful. It was it was very, very painful. Uh, that squad of Gene Sealer Kaltman right there, they just slaughtered that unit of Guardsmen. That's not even going to be up for debate. I was also trying to pepper spray enough damage into the other squads of Guardsmen to force even to take some morale checks, which... He did, and they didn't go very well for him. No, I failed uh, the two morale checks on the units that survived. Ended up losing uh, two. And at the end of turn one, Steven is off to a slight lead, having taken out four of Adam's vehicles, giving him four points for bring it down. Adam has scored two points for engaging all fronts by being in three of the four table quarters at the end of his turn. Let's see how turn two goes for each player. Yeah, the morale losses probably kind of hurt Steven a little bit, but it wasn't really anything devastating. It just always sucks to lose morale. No. Uh, but going into my second turn here, I am moving stuff around. I'm getting the best firing angles as I can, and I'm going to do something sneaky here with this manticore on the right. I'm going to move it up into those ruins, or I can use my direct onslaught stratagem to really punish a unit of ridge runners here and then I'm going to hammer the rest of them with tanks. This is going so, to be... Something you can see going on here is something that is really core to all of 40k, and that is arguing about line of sight. That's uh, definitely a core mechanic of the edition. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically it was a very sneaky line of sight, uh, just barely. I only had to have a one millimeter strip, and that's all I needed, and I'm going to really punish him for this with this movement I made here. Uh, the second turn is going to be very hard on him, this shooting phase. Yeah, the direct fire with those mana cores, with them getting, what is it, plus one to hit? Uh, plus one to hit. Yeah, it's it, it's garbage. It's garbage. It's garbage. It's overpowered. Oh, no, it's overpowered. It's overpowered. Guard's doing so bad right now. But I'm going to start picking apart these ridge runners with my demolisher cannons. Uh, again, I'm playing conservatively, keeping it in my deployment zone. I actually have a unit of, I have a group of scions that I've kept in deep strike that I'm going to hold until the third turn uh, in, the, in a strategic gambit here to kind of really hammer it home. But this, I'm focused on just hitting him as hard as I can this turn. I'm just trying to sustain the fire. You know, not being able to wipe out a single tank on my first turn with sustained fire. I mean, so I'm playing Hive Call. So the big thing about Hive Call is the Warlord trait for Hive Call is giving reroll ones to shoot. Uh, with anything within six inches of the Warlord, and then I'm using Jackal Alphasis as my Warlord so they can priority target and give me plus one to hit. So I'm hitting these tanks on threes, I'm re-rolling ones, and with five D3 LAS cannons, I could not kill a single tank. It, it hurts. It yeah. hurts real bad. Yeah, going into my uh, end phase here, you can see that I've pretty much cleared off the left side of the board and I'm chewing up the right side of the board. I've moved the tank out, I've moved him past his grinding advance door, so he only got to shoot uh, once with the turret. Usually if I move 
five inches or less, I can fire twice with a turret, and it's a tactical decision you have to make with your guard, whether you need the 10-inch mobility or whether you really need to hammer something with a cannon. And I feel like it brings a lot to a mech infantry list. Yeah, truthfully, with that many Lehman Russes, you know, you don't always have to get the double shots. No, you don't always have to get the double shots, and a lot of people will try and fall into that trap where they're like, well, you know, I'm only going to move my tanks half inch because I need double shots. And a lot of the time, you can pick and choose. Yeah. So, Steven killed my truck in the middle there. I'm still holding objectives. Uh, Gene Star Cults have to play the objective game. We, we really do. If we're not playing the objectives, we lose. Here on my turn, I got a couple units that I held back in Deep Strike coming in, deploying banners, and then for one CP, I was able to take that big squad that got pooped out of that truck right there onto the center objective on my side. I was able to throw them back into Deep Strike. It's something these are called canoe. We can throw infantry and bikes back into Deep Strike. And I thought that was better than them trying to charge across the field and just dying by Steven's crossfire next turn. Right, and he's done another sneaky on me, dumping a unit out of a transport, advancing them, and he's gonna charge that manticore. And he's gonna try his best to take all 11 wounds off that manticore but as you see it's not going to work out i use i spend a cp and i get a lucky save and that manticore is going to survive by one which is going to really hurt him because he won't be able to pile into that other tank that's to its left behind it yeah just a really really painful second turn not being able to kill that manticore um i i, I think was really one of one of the many nails in my coffin my coffin was nailed shut pretty thoroughly here in this turn um, with my bad shooting, my bad fighting, and my bad rolls. For turn two, we can see that Steven has scored 16 points compared to 20 points scored by Adam, bringing us to a grand total for the game so far of Steven having a score of 20 and Adam having a score of 22. Still a very close game. Let's see how turn three goes. Going into turn three here, I'm going to really put the death knell final hammer blows into Adam here. I'm going to drop my Scions in in his backfield uh, using the Iodin uh, Gorgon's stratagem uh, Daring Descent to bring my command squad of four Melta Guns in right beside his last uh, transport in his backfield and be in Melta range. I'm going to gun down all of his squads on the objectives, and then I'm going to bring another Scion squad in here on the far left, and I'm just going to move in, knock his banners off, and then put my banners on them uh, next turn. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, with the hammering that I've taken all game after not being able to kill a single tank. And I made sure of th that he will never kill a single tank. <laughs> yeah, it hurt bad, uh, but with all that hammering, there was no way I could block out Steven's deep strikes enough to be able to keep him from doing just whatever he wanted to do in my backline. Yeah, it's just going to be a little triangle of doom there at the bottom. Uh, I have three Scion squads of five. One of them just has regular guns, two of them have plasma guns. I have a little command squad with four melted guns, as I said earlier. And I have a Tempester Prime whose whole goal is just to give orders to people and point a stick and yell at them like, You're next! Yeah, now fortunately for me, for a few extra points, the saving grace for me a little bit is that Steven wasn't then able to charge anything, so I still at least have banners on some objectives, so that allowed me to keep a measly couple of points yeah. from getting ripped away from me. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a gracious benefactor here. Oh yeah. Yeah, but uh, the big thing here is, is I have taken uh, Grind Them Down, which means I have to keep him from killing more of my units than I do of his, so I can score points. And I've done a really good job of it. I've just killed the last of his Ridge Runners. I'm going to shoot some of his characters next turn. Uh, he only has that one big squad in Deep Strike. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty cruel. I mean, look, we are just fighting for our rights to be devoured by the Star Gods. And I'm just trying to put down this insurrection of people with three arms. Ah, uh, it's the third arm that, that counts. Now, I got a squad in from Deep Strike here. My entire everything, being able to come close to storing a few more points, relies on that one squad in the uh, upper left corner being able to make its 9-inch charge roll with a reroll. I've got a command point for a reroll. 
And as we come up on my charge phase, I make the roll, and it fails. Yeah, that's not good for him here. Yeah, garbage, garbage, garbage. And for turn three, even though Adam is taking a bruising, he has scored 10 points compared to Steven's eight points, which brings us at the end of turn three, we have a total score of Steven with 28 and Adam at 32. Let's see how round four goes. So turn four, I am going to finish him off basically. I'm gonna move my tanks up to get as much shooting as possible. I'm going to move my Scion squads around in his backfield to get angles on dudes and remove banners. Uh, this infantry, this Scion squad to the left is going to take that objective. I'm going to kill his two remaining characters and his warlord in the backfield here. They're just going to get gunned down with hot plasma. Uh, the Melta guys surprisingly survived their melee fight and I have two of them left. But they failed their morale with a leadership of six on elite drop troops. Really crazy. I hate it. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's right. Guard are. That's why you have commissars because you aren't brave. No. You are not brave. Uh, unfortunately, you know, a squad of nine uh, toughness three dudes with uh, t-shirt armor saves can't really survive three Lehman Rusk tanks shooting at them. No, uh, they can't. Uh, they, they get gunned down, and as you see here, we're going to roll right on into turn five. Uh, yeah, Steven is going to table me here in turn four, so we're not even stopping to check the score on turn five. Uh, as you should know, moving into turn five, um, because I'm tabled, Steven scores any points that he can move his units to score. He counts the score and grind them down because I have nothing left on the battlefield, and he just wiped me. It's been a great game. And at the end of turn four, we can see Steven is finally pulling away in the points with a score of 39 to Adam's 32. And once again, in turn five, with Adam having no units on the battlefield, he can't actually score any points. Steven also can't score any for Bring It Down because he's killed all the vehicles. At the end of the game, including paint score, we can see Steven with a commanding 74 points compared to Adam's 42 in this brutal game today. Everyone, if you liked what you saw here today, please do us a big favor and hit like and subscribe and tell a friend. It'll really help us out. We're really trying to get this channel uh, going and boosted, and we'd love to bring you more of these great matches. Everyone, until next time, happy wargaming.